the color scheme in any way to match you know what I want to match for my corporate standards for example or personalize it to a specific group or, or, or customer um, and then it is also restricted in this case by something we call an organization an organization is just a uh, special instance or a special case of device groups uh, so a it's a device group where I can grant access uh, to a specific user. This user has access to Acme uh, is the organization. So throughout the product, no matter what dashboard, no matter what device list, if they had access to tickets or events, they would only see things related to Acme. So I can essentially I can create a dashboard uh, and, and uh, I can have one common platform and say you know, grant access to Coke and grant access to Pepsi. And, and those two will never see each other's resources, even though they might have the exact same dashboard slash user profile uh, configuration. Uh, the other thing about the dashboards is you know, the, the, there's this uh, contextual navigation capability that you can leverage uh, as you're building dashboards very easily. Um, what it lets you do is, is create a dashboard that at a high level tells you how some portion of the network is performing. I mean, this is a very simple example where I've got my top 10 for CPU and memory. And then if I decide based on looking at this, or it could be an event list or a topology map where things are color coded based on state, now I can drill in for more information. In this case, if I select the bar uh, in the graph, I drive my, my history. So it just lets me say, all right, is there, is there an issue with memory and CPU on my resources? Uh, maybe on this one, how long has it been going on? I changed the time perspective here so you could you know, scan out for a week or what have you. And then ultimately, you know, with another click, you can drill down into uh, everything that's being collected from that particular resource. So, uh, you know, one click gets you a little more information in the history, and then another click just gives you everything. Um, this example is happens to be one where uh, we've, we've got a Windows box. It happens to be a Hyper-V guest. So we actually have discovered this resource through the Hyper-V uh, hypervisor, discovered a guest, and then also discovered the OS, uh, and then merged those two perspectives uh, into this one, uh, one managed object. Uh, we also see we are doing some critical uh, Windows service monitors, some process monitors, We're doing a round trip email test on this one because it's running Exchange. Um, some of the, I'll, I'll go through this uh, on the other login because some of the things here are grayed out for this particular user. Like I said, pretty much you can control access to anything on the UI, and this user profile has some of these things kind of grayed out. So with that, I'll just jump back over to uh, this particular view, actually. Um, and again, here uh, the, you'll see some of the contextual nature. Can I ask you nature. a requ a quick question here? Sure, go ahead. Um, this view is is basically a live heat map, right? The red, green, yellows. Uh, by heat map, it's events. Yeah, if yeah, that's so, what you mean. Yeah. Uh, so, so the e so but yeah, it's yeah. indicating state at the top level, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. So yeah. So here's your and, root, and you've got state at the at the top at the at the root, and then you can drill down. Basically. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So I've got my devices in here. Uh, I you know that that was essentially a device group that contained these devices and then also more groups. So mm -hmm. you can nest groups inside, drill down inside them. Uh, the, because the icon was, was an orange color indicating like this color over here, that indicated that somewhere in that group was at least one major, you know, one device uh, with a major event on it. And there's, you drill down in. And, and how, how do you, few. I think you, I know so, there was a blurb at the beginning about uh, automatically <laughs> building this. Does it, it, it does auto discovery? Right. So this example, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but the the, uh, the the this specific example is one that would would have been mapped out at least partially by hand because it's been laid out on a sure. uh, you know on a background here. Yeah, I was. Uh, it's it right network devices. So if these are running CDP between them, we would find those links. We do some layer two and some layer three discovery, but a lot of these links may have been drawn. Uh, it, particularly if they're just between servers, may have been drawn by hand. If you look at some of the other examples, uh, well, let's take a look at this one, actually. So this is a flex, uh, flex pod environment. Um, 
So all everything you see on this screen actually, and then some of it I've I've actually turned off. It, it was discovered automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, each each of the individual trees. So when we discovered the through the B Center, uh, we essentially pointed our discovery at the API that went down, found all the hosts, all the VMs, all the data stores, all the networks, everything that that vCenter had visibility to and built that out. Same thing on the NetApp side, except it's uh, the filer and then it's volumes, aggregates, and LUNs. On the Nexus, it's all it's down to the blades, and then on the UCS, there are components of that chassis that were mapped out as well. The last piece that we did was find, based on properties of these components, find relationships between them. So for example, what NetApp LUN is related to what Cisco UCS service profile, uh, what, what NetApp LUN is related to what VMware data uh, store relationship, um, you know, what, what VM is using what data store. So I mean, whatever, I've got some of them filtered out, but you can enable them to see those relationships. We also uh, do this, by the way, if I drill into a particular device. So here's a host on the VM side, and that's the summary page. Summary page is actually a form of a dashboard. You can customize those as well. Um, but I uh, actually want to tr click on the topology tab. So we also have the, the, the topology from the device-centric standpoint. So there's my host. It's got these VMs sitting on it. There's the UCS service profile that's related to it, um, the various uh, 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 LUNs or, or, or volumes that are related to that. Uh, the VM network. So, so you see that, and then actually you can follow it. So if you wanted to get, uh, uh, I clicked on that data store, and it's kind of an uninteresting one. But uh, you, you essentially you can just follow for troubleshooting purposes. You know, uh, when you if you and again th this this also has you know in your term the the heat map uh, where you know there's an event associated with that, and that's why it's colored that way. And if I want to go see the performance data. And what that event is, then I just click on the performance graph instead of the middle part of it. Uh, so there's my data store metrics. The, the event in this case is the utilization has exceeded a particular threshold. Um, you know, one, one question that came up the other day um, with mm -hmm. regard to monitoring is um, mm -hmm. can you, um, you know, set policies, you know, that, that flow down? You know, because right now we set mm -hmm. all of our alerting policies manually. Mm-hmm. Can you, so, 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 can you hold on a second? So I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know who's. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. That was me. Um, okay, that's you. Okay. Uh, all right, no problem. <laughs> uh, so the I, I'm I'm sorry. Your question again? Um, if there's a way to enforce, you know, like mm -hmm. th there's all kinds of alerts and configured, you know, within each V center, you got multiple V centers, yep. you know, to try and mm -hmm. configure all that uh, uniformly, you know, PowerShell, I guess, is really your only option. Uh, well, I mean, this alert is, is an example of something we're collecting from that mentor. Uh, that we, so we are, we are managing these centrally, if that's what you're asking. So, okay, so, so in other words, you don't have to, it, re re you're not relying on triggered, you know, V center alarms. Exactly. We do we do receive those, um, but this is this is a case where we're collecting a metric. We have our own threshold, uh, and, and 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 you can adjust that threshold uh, if you look in here. So so any of the uh, metrics that we're collecting that uh, that you have uh, a threat. So data store utilization high. There's your 85 percent threshold right there. So we're collecting that that metric. Uh, if I adjust this here, I'm, adjust, I'm adjusting it for this device only, but you can apply that through a template. You know, for example, it, it, it's, it's part of the monitoring policy. So if you change it there, you change it for everybody. If you change it in a template and then apply it to a subset, then you're changing it for a subset. If you just want to change it for one device, you do it here. And then you can also suppress an event. Uh, so I mean, you know, that, that this is this is that event. If you wanted to go in here, suppress event for this device. Yeah. The, the point you know, being, you know, uh, if we did like we decided just the other day, you know, instead of having 70% uh, be our, our red alert in vCenter, mm -hmm. we'd rather have it be 80%. Well, now to make that change happen, we've got to go to vCenter to vCenter to vCenter to change that, or else do a do a PowerShell. You, here you could, you know, 
let's say you do got, it one time. Yeah. yeah, let's say you've got a rollout, a software rollout, let's say Office 2013, and you know that's going to hit everything hard. Well, you're going to set your threshold <laughs> maybe a little bit higher. Let's set it for 85 for the weekend because we all don't want to get called, you know. <laughs> and you can right. do that pretty yep. easily. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So uh, that so from a relationship standpoint, so that's kind of the the, the flex pod piece, and you know there, there's there's metrics that at, at each of those layers. Uh, it, the, we've also from a relationship discovery piece. Uh, if you look at the AWS side of the house, uh, I think it's an interesting use case because you get into things like uh, if we look at the a particular VPC. So here you see all your EC2 instances. Uh, you see the subnets, and it's just if you've ever played with CloudWatch, um, you know it it, it it has this information. It's just not as easily. It's not really visualized, and it's kind of difficult to follow. Here, it's very simple to kind of see how everything is laid out, and then you see we can also discover at the OS layer. So, you know, here's an EC2 instance where if I look at and pull this up. You'll see an example of, all right, here's what we collect through the EC2 API. At the same time, we've put a collector inside the VPC, and we did a discovery. We figured out that it was running Red Hat Linux, and it was running an SNMP agent, and we started collecting all of that data as well. So again, I mean, that's a case where you've discovered these two things through two, uh, I'd say, fairly drastically different <laughs> methods. You know, it's two completely different collectors even. One is collecting and, and talking to the API and just discovered it as essentially a virtual machine in the AWS space. And then another one which discovered it through SNMP as this Red Hat instance, but it's it, in the, at the end of the day you create one device. Again, you talk about threshold management, alarm suppression, reporting, dashboards. This shows up as one device. A lot of tools would call this two separate devices and you know, kind of complicate things from that mm -hmm. perspective. We do also, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, uh, on the config side, so we talk about the, the monitoring policies. You know, all of this is aligned as part of the discovery in an automated way. Some of the collection we do is what we call you know, config collection. You can take this data and map it over into an asset record if you want. But there's a lot of good data that we collect uh, on the config side, which kind of helps you keep track of your assets and inventory uh, as well. Um, oh, and what I meant to show is, uh, or I think I did actually, I showed the topology, the topology mapping here. Uh, and again, obviously, you can follow that. If I click on an EC2 instance, you'll see, ah, there's the EC2 instance, it's subnet, what VPC, the EPS, EBS volumes it's attached to. So th those are its disks, essentially. Uh, so I think that, that capability uh, you know, lends itself well to people that are trying to troubleshoot something and see how p different pieces fit together. Uh, something I wanted to highlight again back here just on the contextual na nature. So this traffic light widget uh, is um, basically uh, just a high level status of these are organizations. This could be device groups. Uh, uh, but you know each of those, so HQ data center has uh, you know some, some critical uh, alerts. Acme has you know devices that have major alerts. So again, when I clicked on Acme, here I got my device list updated, my event list updated based on that. Uh, you can drill into this topology over here. You can also drill in, obviously, to these uh, these event lists. These are also uh, contextual uh, in nature. If you turn around and just type something in here, and, and you can type into multiple fields uh, and, and drill down pretty quickly uh, into what it is that you're looking for, and then if, Further drill in. When we do our discovery, uh, at the, you know we're going to figure out what ports are open, what services and processes are, are running, the software titles that are installed. That's all part of the discovery. Um, you know this is a case where it's a physical box. So you know sometimes we also find hardware specific agents during the discovery, uh, and and map things over into an asset record. So it is possible to. to populate the asset record 
automatically based on uh, that discovery there as well. Um, the, one of the last things uh, that I wanted to highlight here as well is you also have this concept of a service. Uh, so I, I can essentially group devices into uh, something called an IT service and aggregate metrics from that group of devices into this service layer. And then I can also map some of those aggregated metrics into uh, what we call vitals for the service, availability, health, and risk. Uh, and, and, so, and then because you're mapping whatever metrics you're collecting into these common KPIs in the service layer, it also means I now have the ability to create a dashboard that is basically a service level dashboard, um, you know, regardless of the service and regardless of what underlying metrics uh, I'm actually pulling, because I've mapped them into these common three common KPIs here. Uh, so, for example, if I look at my my overall Windows stack, uh, it says my availability, you know, health and risk metrics are here. I've got this little map. This is another one that would have probably been been drawn out. Uh, a little more manually. If I drill in, I end up looking at uh, a, what I call a service level dashboard. So you see some of the metrics that we're collecting here that we've mapped into the service vitals. And then there are different variations of the dashboard. I also like to show this one because ultimately you can, you can also show at this dashboard all of the devices that make up that service and what their individual state is and drill into there. So I can go from, hey, I have a service. It's got a high degree of risk. Uh, drill into it, see what devices are there, what their states are, drill into a specific device, and, and kind of you know, have this natural flow of your investigation based on, uh, you know, based on that, that information that you have. Um, one of the examples I also like to show, because I think it makes sense, is this is an example of an IT service around Exchange. So uh, here, to illustrate what health, availability, and, and, and risk are. So in this case, they took, we took health and said, my average delivery time is going to be tied to health. So if, if messages are going through, uh, but yet are taking, you know, and they're going through quickly, then it's a healthy service. If, 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 if they start taking a long time to go through, then we might say, you know what, health is degraded, uh, but it's still available. Down here, we can say risk. So if RPC latency appears to be increasing, we could say we have an increased level of risk, and maybe somebody needs to figure out why that's happening. On the other hand, you can tie availability to something completely different. Um, I think we should, in, in our example here, I believe we should have tied it to the round trip email test because ultimately you could say, hey, if that test is going through and going through in a reasonable amount of time, then the service is available. Um, here I think we actually tied it to just average service av server availability, um, yeah, which is fine too. But the point is, for any IT service that you have, you could essentially define what constitutes availability, what constitutes that it's actually healthy, and what might be an indication that it's at risk. Uh, and you can map that out, build a dashboard associated with it. Last thing I'll show you real quick, unless you have other questions that, that follow on, is just I mentioned how easy it is to build the dashboards. Um, I just clicked on the New button. When you click on the New button, you're going to get a blank dashboard. And I drug, you know, dragged my mouse across, and then from there, it's a matter of just picking, you know, uh, in what, you know, what kind of widget you want uh, to display in that particular location. Uh, you know, anything from a port monitor or web content check. In this case, I'm just going to go with something that's generic. Uh, one of the vi you know, device vitals, memory utilization. I'm also going to set it up so that we can drive context to another window. Uh, and I want it to be a column, so we'll just save it there. So now I've got my top 10 for memory utilization, and I want to drive uh, a time series graph based on what I select in that window. So I'm going to go with my time series. Here, you can put specific devices in. I could put actually multiple devices, so I can multi-select devices. I'm just going to say it's contextual, and the metric itself 
uh, is going to be contextual as well. You can keep adding lines here. Um, so for example, in one of the examples I showed before, you could say contextual, and then this could be the memory vital, and then another one for CPU vital, another one for swap vital. So then every device I select, I'm actually displaying all three of those metrics. I'm leaving this one really basic and just showing you know, whatever's in here that I select will drive whatever, you know, whatever uh, is going to be displayed in the time series graph. Uh, and then I can also drill down. My drill down capability is now uh, from, you know, from the time series graph. Just click anywhere on that line. It'll bring up the drill down for that device. There's also like a quick add feature. So, you know, top 10 plus latency and vitals, you know, didn't even have to go through all that. I could have just done a quick add, and I've got pretty much the same thing, uh, except this is keyed off latency. Um, so that's dashboards, um, and that's kind of our product uh, <laughs> in, a, in a whirlwind tour. So you have any, qu any questions? I don't know. It might just let me look and see who else is still on. I think it's... Uh, I think it's just you actually still on audio. One oh. other person is just just on uh, is just on the web. I don't know. I don't think they can hear. Um, I guess a, a question around scale. Um, you know, uh -huh. how many? Yep. We've looked at you know VCOPS, and mm -hmm. uh, haven't been impressed with its ability to scale. We've looked at uh, yep. Li Liquidware Labs for monitoring VMs. Mm -hmm. Great stuff, but mm -hmm. problems with scale. And even uh, VM Turbo uh, mm -hmm. works great. S scale, eh, you know. Yeah. So, what, yeah. What so, it, you know, and to be yeah. fair, it is a gargantuan yeah. environment, but that's mm -hmm. that's our how, problem. <laughs> how big is your environment? Uh well, it's you know, twenty-five thousand plus in our VDI environment, and mm -hmm. then there's servers for a few, couple thousand more. Right. Okay. So you know, for virtual <laughs> workloads. Right. So the way we go about deployment, we talk. So 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 essentially, we call this a stack. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in a single in a single stack, uh, we've we've tested up to about thirty thousand uh, devices. Mm -hmm. um, and when we say device, I mean it's a blend. You know, one of the next questions people ask is what's a, what's a device and and. and and you know all devices aren't necessarily created equal, so it, it's hard to say you know thirty thousand of any kind of device. But it, we typically test with a blend of devices: servers, switches, routers. You know, just just a, a good mix, representative mix. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, thirty thousand devices, uh, and then we have something called Global Manager actually that sits on top. So you can actually have multiple stacks, and then Global Manager gives you a common view uh, so that you've got one dashboard for all your events, top 10, you know, top, not top 10, but top N uh, graphs, uh, event, uh, you know, uh, inventory list, device list, search capabilities. Uh, so, so essentially one, you know, with Global Manager, you can manage multiple stacks and go well beyond uh, the the thirty thousand device barrier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've yeah. seen other pro products that have you know an aggregate appliance, mm -hmm. you know, an aggregate web interface, mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. they work, sometimes they don't. I mean, have you actually seen it operate at scale with the the aggregate view? Um, it's a it's a fairly I'll you know I'll be honest, it's a fairly recent addition. Uh, so we have customers that are uh, kind of in the early stages of deploying it. We've done a lot of beta testing with those same customers, and now they're 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 putting it into production. Um, you know, again, we've before producing that, we did a lot of work at the uh, stack itself to 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 scale that up, and that work really really continues. So I mean, as I'm not even sure that 30,000 is the top end mm -hmm. uh, uh, for for a single a single stack that's just that's the number that we use but we have people actually that have gone yeah because you know beyond speed, that. speed yeah. responsiveness is, is a big deal when you're trying to drill through thousands of objects yep. and find out where the problem is or yep. or, or on a daily basis hey I just like to take a look at my environment and see what's normal right. today and that's my idea behind 
a certain part of my idea behind you know having snappy dashboards is people if people can get access to them you know on a daily basis they start building up um you know um, knowledge of their environment that they know what's normal and they, they can start developing an instinctual you know feel for you know when something's wrong because they can get in there and look at it <laughs> yeah yeah and the way that i mean and, and st even even with global manager you know uh, the 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 main thing with Global Manager is it really just needs to make API calls. So it, it, the scale on the Global Manager side, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say it's less important than the scale at the stack, but I think the challenge is, is perhaps not as big as it might seem. Um, because if you can, if you can make the, the individual stack uh, you know, op operate really well at 30,000 devices, uh, the API mechanism is essentially the same as our UI mechanism. So when I build a dashboard, I say I want to, you know, it, it becomes more of a reporting interface with a drill through at that point. Uh, so if I create a dashboard, for example, that has a top 50 or something, it basically sends an API call to each of the stacks. That API call is, is exactly the same thing that our UI does on each of those individual stacks. The, uh, the global manager then just takes those and kind of brings them back. And if you actually say, "Oh, I want to drill into that device," well, at that point, you're 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 really not using the global manager interface anymore. You're drilling into the individual stack, sure. and and sure. and that stack interface is is what you're navigating at that point. Yeah, yeah. If, if, as long as you didn't have to break it into too many stacks, you may meet you right. may only need limited functionality at the at the global level, you know. Right. I mean, when a, when a problem right. comes in, you're generally going to know it's in, you know, maybe. If you could divide your environment into three or four chunks, you would probably know which path to choose from that, you know, either geographically. Right. Probably if you just divide it geographically, that would probably be enough for people to know which which mm -hmm. branch to go down. And if, then if you had, cause, you know, your problem is you get a prop, a, 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 an alert on a host. You're not, not someone may not be familiar with your, with your environment yet they're on call. And well, well, where is that host? You know, if they don't even know geographically where that host is based on the name, they don't look good. First of all, <laughs> and that takes them right. longer. Yeah. yeah. So if, at least if you had, <laughs> if you had search capability, that problem, and then to know which which branch to follow at, from that point, that would probably be enough. Yeah, and you do have search capability. I mean, the interface at the global manager looks exactly like uh, the interface um, uh, at the uh, at this stack, at this level, level here. Y yeah. So I mean, if you like like this table here, you have that same you have that same uh, table, but mm -hmm. but it's more of a, a of a search uh, capability, um, and then. The same thing from the the event uh, perspective, and you've got that find while you type capability. Mm -hmm. And then when you drill in, like when I click here, I'm just pulling up uh, uh, this interface. In that case, you'd be just shooting straight through to that individual stack, and this display would come from that stack. Uh, but like I said, I mean, you can do, it's pretty simple to do, like if you think you know what the name of something is or, you know, um, I, I guess I picked the lab and I already had two labs. So, but I mean, if you if you just start typing and do the find while you type, you you, you get down to a pretty short list uh, yeah, that's, pretty that's, quickly. That's you pretty also cool. have, yeah, and you, and you also have, uh, oops, clicked on the wrong tab. You also have this uh, uh, device group. Uh, perspective, which is another thing that you can, you know, y y devices, when I was talking about the organizations that limit people's view, that's a special device group. In, in, in that case, each device only belongs to one group, but, but there are also device groups that you use uh, in the, for the purposes of maps. So right here, so device groups, so in this case, the device can belong to as many groups as you want. And, and what do you use them for? You use them in the maps. You use them in config policies or bulk edit. So if you click on one of these right here, it says bulk device configuration. So if you wanted to, that's that thing I was describing, if you wanted to change a threshold, you would do it. You'd, you'd potentially just create a device group, potentially based on, a, on a, a, a rule. So you can statically define them like this. You know, that's what you would do right here. If you mm -hmm. click add, you'd add devices or groups. Or you'd say add 
and you, based on a rule, which could be things like, you know, what organization in is, is it in, uh, what, is, what does it contain in the name, what's its IP range, so, you know, something like that. So you can create whatever rule you want to automatically populate the device group. In this case, we did the device name contains Acme, and that gave me 37 devices. Now I can bulk edit this. I can use it in automation policies. So if I get it, you know, I get an ev a certain event for this group, notify this person over here, or the, you know, this team over here, or run an automation script which opens a ticket in my service now or whatever ticketing system I'm using. Um, unless you're using ours, you can open a ticket in ours. Uh, you know, the maintenance schedules, event suppression. So that's what device groups are used for and I think that's something that you know based on what you were just describing you mm -hmm. you don't necessarily always have to search for the device you might see ah it's in this group and guess what I've already got some automation policies that are going to kick in based on the group that it's in that does something yeah that's Maybe it runs that's a script. that's key is to have that automation piece in there because you know no matter how good you get at filtering results to filter out po false positives you know in the end yep. you know What's what's most useful is to automate a response, because <laughs> you only have right. so many yep. warm bodies, and year to year we usually have fewer. Yep, yep. And you can do things like uh, in our event policies. There's something called an occurrence count over occurrence time. Yeah. Uh, so if you ha certain things like I don't know utilization spikes for CPU maybe, or you know interface utilization where maybe it's going to pop up over. You know, whatever the threshold is, if it's 80%, if it pops up over 80 one time, maybe you don't care, you don't want to get a bunch of events like that. But let's say it pops up to you know to 85 and stays there, uh, you know, th then you want to know. So it's a persistent state. There's something called a current count over current time. So it, it, let's say if you're polling every five minutes and you said it, it, I need three hits in 15 minutes, that means you know three consecutive polls. It can also be three minute, three times in an hour, or you know, what, what, whatever y you can set it so that you hopefully get, you know, real events versus the transient conditions. Right. right. Um, and and then I've your got, run I've got, book. I've got, I've got to go ahead. Go ahead. Finish that. Gotta, you got Yeah, I was just going to say your actions. So you define your actions here. They can be send an email, create a tri uh, ticket, SQL query snippet. So run some Python thing. Yeah. Uh, to take some action and then you bundle them up into an automation policy which basically says hey you know for and this this is an example of one that's aligned to a device group uh, versus individual devices for everything in acme for all events for severities that are greater than minor and 15 minutes goes by and it's not cleared run this snippet which does a serial number lookup ping trace route create an incident in service now with the information from that previous snippet, and then send an email to a couple of uh, a different uh, a guy named Pete and an app monitoring group. Uh, so you can build those, all, all of those that, uh, in as well.